Hello? Hello? Okay. I'm really not very good with surprises. Well, it isn't my mystery man. What's your name? Larry Hammond. I would have told you earlier, but uh, I have some serious trust issues going on. And with all that's happened, uh, I've got the right to be a little paranoid. Yeah, I guess you do. You haven't been using the code name Poison Pawn, have you? No. Why? That's not important. How'd you get here? I followed you. I wanted to make sure you came here alone. Well, I hope you were more careful about being followed than I was. Now, I have a very strong sense of self-preservation. I even brush my teeth carefully. Yeah, it shows. Why don't we just start at the top and see what you know? Tell me about Carl Linsky. Well, Linsky and I both worked on STG. But uh, I didn't know him back then. I recognized his picture in the paper from when he had his suicide. Well, that's helpful. How about STG? It was a really mysterious operation. I mean, Greg brought me in to do some programming. I didn't know anybody on the design team, and we weren't encouraged to get to know each other either. I mean, once we got our instructions, uh, we went off to work in different places. None of us knew what each other was working on. So, who was in charge of this little circus? Greg had been there the longest. He was pretty much running the show. So is he this overlord I've come to hear so much about? Oh, no, there, there had to have been higher ups. Uh, I knew Greg for a long time. We were in Mutant League together. Oh. Just so I understand something here, the reason you got in contact with me is because you wanted me to find Call's lab, right? Why? Well, early on in the program, Greg got really paranoid and relocated his base of operation. And no one knew where he was at. I didn't even see him until after I finished my work with STG. And a couple of weeks ago, after all the mysterious deaths, I decided to go underground and get a read on my life expectancy. Well, you see, I was underground, and Greg found me, which didn't give me a great sense of well-being. Anyway, he, he said he needed my help. To do what? He wanted to find the pass cards we'd all been issued. You see, all eight of us received these cards at the beginning of the project. They were used to transmit data from wherever we were working to some sort of central computer. Now, the whereabouts of that computer, that, that was top secret. Well, what about the chess moves? Oh, I don't know anything about those. I think they were Greg's idea. He designed the cards. And you've got a card. Yeah. You take it. Just holding the thing next to my skin just gives me the hives. No, it's that polyester. Really? You told me if I came here that I was going to get the answer to all of my questions. I said that? No, I, I was just guessing. I, I've got something that might help. Now, Greg gave me this the last time I saw him. Now, he said, don't open it unless something happened to him. I think something happened to him. What are we supposed to do with it? What are we supposed to do with it? Uh -uh. It's your problem now. I told you everything I know. I gave you a pass card, and I gave you what Greg gave me. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go somewhere and try not to get killed. Hasta la pasta, baby. Hey, Larry. Thanks for the help. Anytime. To Larry, or whoever's watching this, I'll have to assume that my first plan has failed, and I'm probably dead. The purpose of this message is a warning, and afterwards my computer will reformat, so listen up. I've enjoyed a long friendship with Jay St. Gideon. We founded Gideon Enterprises together years ago. 
and I believe that he is a good man and has honorable intentions, regardless of how I may disagree with his philosophy. For years, he has worked on a program called Overlord, a worldwide surveillance system which would allow him ultimately to control key political figures, thereby speeding up the world peace process. This was all made possible about a year ago. A breakthrough in nanotechnology allowed us to create microscopic devices that once implanted inside someone would allow us to control the physiological reactions, the, the chemical reactions, make the person a slave to positive response. And in this way was born the STG project, sort of a Pavlovian remote control program. We recruited seven other scientists and put them on different phases of the project so none of them would know what the entire project was about. We gave them pass cards which would allow them to transmit data to a central overlord computer. I found out shortly thereafter that John Klaus, one of the scientists, was intending to sell out the project to the Law and Order Party. When I went to Gideon with my, my fears, he disregarded them. Either he knew something that I didn't, or he was simply too obsessed to listen to reason. Regardless, I took it upon myself to implement a fail-safe program into Overlord, which I called Stalemate. Now, in order to activate this stalemate fail-safe program in the Overlord system, all eight STG pass cards are required. I made a plan to track down the other seven pass cards. I started with Carl Linsky's home once I'd learned that he'd commit a suicide, but I was unable to find the card. The thought crossed my mind that since Carl Linsky and John Klaus were friends, that possibly Linsky staged his own death and is working with Law and & Order and John Klaus but I can't substantiate that. At this point, I'm not sure who I can trust, outside of Larry Hammond and Jay St. Gideon, though I'm not sure how much Jay St. Gideon will listen to me at this point. Regardless, Gideon's program, Overlord, must be deactivated. If not by me, then by whoever's watching this message. I knew it! You knew what? Oh, Sylvia was behind the whole thing. Oh, it all fits together now. Of course, Linsky staged his own suicide. Okay, you got yourself an interesting theory now. Play with it. Um, well, okay. Linsky uh, worked at the clinic, right? right? And, um, well, there's a lot of patients there, and, you know, maybe one was in a coma or terminally ill, sure. and uh, Linsky finds one that is about his same size, it maybe even looks like him. And I think that's where Linsky probably gets the idea. So he dresses the patient in his clothes. He, you know, plants the wallet, the keys, and the, the suicide note on him. They, you know, dump the body in the bay, and uh, it's recovered, and who identifies it? Sylvia. Please, we're finished. Please. Well, did I get it? Did I figure it out? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe so. So, well, then why don't you um, tell me the rest? Actually, I'm fascinated by your story. Why don't you tell me what you'd do next? If it were me, I would probably go to the Law and Order Party headquarters. That's exactly where I went, because now I had Robert Knott's pass card. Pretty smart. You saw that on Mission Impossible, didn't you? Oh? Did they use that trick, too? Why, I had no idea. Did you have any problems setting up the photo? Are you kidding? What do you think I am, an idiot? I have a message for you. You'll probably think it's important. You can pick it up at my shop whenever you get the time to see me. Ciao for now. Sheesh, Jorge, you're not still playing the same game, are you? So, you got my message. Yeah, I did. I was contacted on the internet by the poison pawn you asked me about. He sent an email for you. For me? It's over there on that computer. Thanks. There was no return address. That's all right. 